Hi, so in this video we're going to look at perturbation theory, specifically time independent perturbation theory. I may do a video later on time dependent perturbation theory. But perturbation theory is uh, a quantum mechanical technique. It's actually also used in classical mechanics, except it's much harder in classical mechanics. So let's say we have the Hamiltonian H. And this consists of a part H0, which we know the solution to. So H0 could be something like the simple harmonic oscillator or the, um, the hydrogen atom, something that we can kind of solve for, or like the potential string. Another potential string there, let me say that again, like the square potential one. And another part, which I'm going to call epsilon phi, which we, we can't really solve for. So we, we can't solve this whole Hamiltonian here. But we're going to say that epsilon here is small. And that's and that, that means we can use like small approximations or like Taylor series kind of expansions in terms of epsilon. So our new eigenstate of this wave function, we're going to write that as n prime. And that's going to consist of the original eigenstate n plus epsilon times by a first order change plus epsilon squared times by a second order change and so on. So basically doing the Taylor series. Uh, the aim of perturbation theory is to find this and this and so on. So this here is the eigenstate of this perturbation, uh, sorry, of this Hamiltonian. And we know to first order our new eigenstate, the eigenstate of this Hamiltonian. Um, so this is the eigenstate of this Hamiltonian. We know that this must be this uh, when epsilon equals zero. So this means this first term must be the eigenstate of that. So that's where that comes from. Likewise, we're going to expand our energy. So E prime is the energy of this eigenstate here. Um, and that must go to E, let's call it, just, let's call it En. Um, let's call it En prime to be consistent. Plus epsilon En1 plus epsilon squared En2 and so on. Okay, so in this video what we are going to find is this here, wait, let's see if I can find a different colour pen, I should be able to, this this here, which doesn't work, um, nah, screw it, this here, this here, and this here, so we're going to find these in our, in this video. So, how do we relate all of these things, well, clearly we're going to look at the time independent going in the there, let me say again, it's just showing the equation. Um, my pronunciation is clearly terrible. So this says that h bar n prime must equal e n prime n. Like that. That's clearly the result of like by actually by definition of e n and n prime. So that that holds by definition really. So if we equate first order terms, so we equate terms of this expression that are order elapsed epsilon. Um, so from here we are going to get, we're going to get this, we're going to get the h naught times by this here. So that's going to give us h naught n1, like that. So that's that, because that term is going to be order epsilon in this expression here. We're also going to get another term, we're going to get this term and this term, so it's going to be phi n. And on this side, we are going to get this term times by this term, so that's e n n1 plus um, e n prime times by e n. Sorry, yeah, like that. Okay. I should move my whiteboard because that's slightly gone off the screen. So that's what we have from time uh, independent Gonaga equation. Now here's a bit that people often find tricky or I don't really like. Um, we are going to take the inner product of this with n. Okay? So we are going to take n here, so we're going to put an n here. We are going to put n, let's change that, we're going to put an n here. And uh, we're going to put an n here, and lastly, we are going to put 
uh, and, and here, for example. Okay, so this term here becomes e n n n prime, I guess, or n one. That's n one rather than n prime. Um, so that's bad notation. All the n's here. So this is n prime. Well, this is n one. Um, so all the n. So this is n one, etc. Um, I keep saying um a lot. I'm sorry. And we also have this, uh, which we can't really do much about. Uh, this comes through to give e n cos e n e n e n is just scalar like that plus e n prime like that. Okay. There's never plenty in there. That's simply that. Um, we are now going to actually cancel this with this. And that gives us that the first order we have that en prime, or sorry, en1. I should really change my notation. Um, so en1 is equal to this thing here. And that's a useful thing to remember. Of course, it's really easy to remember and it's quite helpful. So I'm going to put that up here that we have that en is equal to, can you see that? Just about n phi. Like that. Okay. So now we found that. We have found that. Let's put a tick next to that because we found it. Um, we're going to go back to this expression here. Let's rub these out. So we're back at this expression, which is remember we equated the third, the order epsilon, and we are going to say we are going to take the inner product of this now, not with n but with k, just an arbitrary vector k. And it actually turns out that it can't be n, um, because we will divide by something that will be n if it it will, will be divided by something by by zero if we use n here. Um, I should also mention that here we're looking at non-degenerate perturbation theory. Um, degenerate degenerate perturbation theory is slightly different, and I'm going to make a video on that later. Um, but here we are simply assuming that all the states are degenerate, or or, you know, or to be precise, we assume that n is uh, there's no other energy states with energy e n. Okay, so we are going to now do this. So this becomes e k. So remember, this Hamiltonian is emission. So we can act either this way, or we can act it this way. So we're going to act it this way to give e k. Let's move that slightly that way, um, and that's going to give us k n prime like that. Plus, this remains as it is, we can't do anything with this. And this, again, we could just take the n out, so this becomes k n1. And this becomes e n1 k n, which actually happens. Ooh, it's gone totally out. Okay, this term happens to be zero, so I'm just going to rub that out. Um, like that. And then we are left with this expression here. So with this expression, we are dealing with. So we we ooh, did that move? Sorry, I'm I'm using the setup here which I've never used before. Hence why I'm like jumping around just to make sure everything's working. Um, this n prime here, we are going to write that as a sum over let's call it i of the state c i i and basically find n prime, we need to find this i. These are the eigenstates of this Hamiltonian here. And we're also going to say that i is not equal to n. Um, the reason for that is because the first order we kind of want this to be normalized. We can do that if we want. We can set it as a normalization condition that this can't depend on n. That's a totally valid thing to do. Um, okay, so we take that and we find this. So this here is going to give us, this here then is going to give us ck just by like normal algebra this here we can't do anything with and this here is also going to give us ck like that so if we rearrange this, that gives us, I'm just going to put some brackets around that uh, this is going to give us that ck is equal to k v prime n over e 
n minus ek. Like that, that simple algebra, uh, moving things around. Notice it's n first on the bottom, but n second on the top. And that means that we have found this n prime, because this n prime is therefore equal to the sum of i not equal to n, uh, and then if we sub i v n over e n minus e i times by i. So that's our second result. Let's move that up slightly. That's our second result. And we are going to put that up here with our first result, uh, like that. And that's equal to the sum of i not equal to n times by i times by phi n e n minus e i times by i. Okay, so actually we've now we've now used the limits of this expression here, and we don't need that now. We now need to go to higher orders, specifically the second order, because um, we'll be here all day. We keep going forever. Um, well, more than all day, but you know what I mean. Um, so we're now going to replace second order terms in this. Now, second order terms, we get this term here. Um, so on this side, we get the e n two, and that's times by h naught. We also get this. This is a v. We also get this times by this. So we're going to get v n one. And on this side, we are going to get the e n two times by n, and the e n two times by so the e n one times by that. Uh, n one, and then lastly, how are we doing for space? Let's move that slightly that way, and let's put this and well, e n n squared. Okay. Again, we're going to take the inner quadrant with respect to n. Oh, sorry, I should have ticked this. We have found that. Um, let's take the inner quadrant with respect to n. And this here, I'm going to jump some steps because I'm kind of running out of time. So this gives us a n, n, n2 plus n, v, n1 plus, and that just goes to, ooh, that should be equals, that just goes to e n2. That goes to e n one n n one like that. Can we see that? Nope. That okay. And uh, this one here goes to oh, plus e n n n two. This term here cancels with this term up here. So let's rub this out. And uh, this term here happens to go to zero because the n n one. Remember we said. That, that n1 didn't depend on n, had no component in the n direction by our strange normalization conditions, and that's an n1 prime. Um, so this is e n2, and we know this e n1, we have it written up here. So this actually becomes the sum of i not equal to n times by i v n, and then we are, we are going to get n. Uh, v i like that over e n minus e i like that. Now we can just write this as a modular squared like this, and that gives us our final result down there. So that gives us this term here, and that gives us all the terms we were uh, working out how to find in this video. Um, so that's a general derivation of the results of. Perturbation theory. So we have this result here, and these two results up here. Um, so I am going to have to stop in a second, just because I have a limit of 15 minutes on these videos. Um, feedback is really appreciated. I don't care. Like if you thought these videos were really bad, I kind of want to improve them. So feedback's important. Uh, if you have any comments or if I made any like sorts of mistakes, they are appreciated. And thank you for watching.